Taiwan. I'm Sai Chi with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Property prices across Taiwan have seen dramatic increases in the last four years. The northern city of Xinzhou has seen the highest increases, with prices going up by over 80 percent, and national average property prices across Taiwan increasing by 46 percent since the first quarter of 2020. Real estate agents say the steep increase is making it harder for young people to get on the property ladder. The country's property prices are among the highest in the world, with average wages being some of the lowest in advanced countries. Legislators in Taiwan are trying to help working parents balance childcare and their careers. Tiffany Wong reports on some of their proposals. Newborns, a dwindling number in Taiwan. The country has one of the lowest birth rates in the world and last year hit a record low of 5.82 births per 1,000 people. It's an issue the government is trying hard to remedy. Under current employment laws, the government provides subsidies for those taking parental leave for children under three to try and ease the financial burden for Taiwan's young working parents. But some legislators say the country's working parents still need more support, and they are proposing that the government allow people to take parental leave until their children are eight years old. They're also proposing more flexibility in the amount of time that people can take off. Parents are currently required to take a minimum of 30 days off, a period that results in a dock in their pay. Legislators say it makes more sense to allow parents to take time off in day or even hour increments to deal with the unpredictability of parenting. The new proposals also seek to encourage fathers to take parental leave to promote equal participation in child care for parents, a model legislators say has worked in Japan. For many here, more needs to be done to improve not just Taiwan's work culture, but its support of parents who are employees. What's clear is that under current regulations, there are still a lot of barriers for young adults here to having children. Along with a declining birth rate, Taiwan's population is rapidly aging, causing concerns for a diminishing workforce and an economic slowdown making it a priority for Taiwan's government to come up with the correct combination of policies to support young families and bolster the country's future. Justin Wu and Tiffany Wong in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. People in Taiwan who want to give up their pets will soon face higher fees and stricter procedures to do so. New laws aim to discourage the public from thinking that the government will simply adopt their unwanted pets. But animal rights groups fear it could result in even more cases of abandonment. Rhys Ayres has the story. Rejected by their owners, the welfare of these animals is now the government's responsibility. Shelters across Taiwan are inundated with pets given up by their owners, not wanting them or unable to look after them. It's a problem that new legislation that comes into effect in May hopes to curb. In addition to requiring health certificates and an almost 300 US dollar fee, owners wishing to hand exotic pets over to government care will have to pay an extra bill of up to 310 US dollars due to the higher costs associated with housing more unusual animals. While animal protection groups agree there's a problem with owners giving up their pets, they also fear this new legislation could backfire and bring about more cases of abandonment, not fewer. Vets, legislators and animal rights groups all agree owners need to be more responsible when adopting and raising pets. But this law could see fewer animals in shelters and more on the streets. Devon Tsai and Reese Ayres for Taiwan Plus. 
Scientists are getting to know a little more about the life cycle of pufferfish after researchers successfully breed them for the first time in Taiwan. Maddie Ann Strutter has more. This pair of baby longspine porcupine fish are the newest arrivals at a marine museum in Taiwan, the result of the country's first successful attempt to breed them artificially. While the longspine is the most common type of pufferfish in northern Taiwan, its offspring have remained somewhat of a mystery to researchers. That is, until now. Now the museum can observe the baby puffer fish. They're learning all sorts of surprising things. 原本以為就是這些河豚他們應該是很貪吃,因為長大的河豚都非常非常的貪吃,什麼都吃。那在飼養的過程中竟然又發現這些小寶寶他們非常非常的挑食。Out of the 2000 eggs the researchers began with, only 20 hatched, and the two strongest specimens are on show to the public. And although they may look harmless at first, the pair seem to enjoy showing off their strength every once in a while. 他在遇到危險的時候,他會想辦法讓自己長大,讓水灌到身體裡面,然後長大。The fish can swell to twice or three times their original size, causing their spikes to stick out and scaring off potential predators. The fish began to develop this impressive ability at just 14 days old, making even these babies a force not to be puffed at. Ryan Wu and Maddie Anstruther for Taiwan Plus. An endangered Formosan black bear has been released back into the wild after four months after being caught in an illegal hunting trap. It took authorities and vets 17 hours to free the female bear from the trap and months to treat her wounds. The local indigenous Dayang group named her Lisa Un, which means mother of life. They sang a prayer of blessing as she returned to the mountains. The Formosan black bear is Taiwan's only native bear, and only a few hundred are believed to survive in the wild. A local traditional performance troupe in Taiwan is being recognized for its historical and cultural significance. A common form of traditional performance seen at temples in Taiwan. This is Ba Jia Jiang, also known as the Eight Generals. From the face makeup, hats, costumes, props and distinct movements, they emanate profound cultural significance and meaning. Here in Yunlin County, this local Ba Jia Jiang troupe is now officially an intangible cultural asset of folklore, the first of its kind in the county. In Taiwan, performing arts traditions can be granted the title intangible cultural asset to help the development and teaching of traditional skills related to that art form. This Ba Jia Jiang troupe was established less than three decades ago and usually performs at the Beigang Chaotian Temple's Mazu Parade. Their performances are said to take captive ghosts and evil spirits, ensuring safety, good fortune and protection. And now its tradition and skill are being recognized. 在這個文史還有就是整個記憶傳承的部分, the Ba Jia Jiang tradition originated in Fuzhou, China, and was brought to Taiwan in 1745. Although troops are not so common anymore in Fuzhou, the tradition is still alive and thriving in Taiwan. And now these generals, with their new title, can continue marshalling their forces to pass on their craft to future generations. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. You can visit the Taiwan Plus website or follow our social media for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally today, check out these unusual swarm of jellyfish appearing along the coast of Venezuela this year, affecting the local fishing industry. I'm Sani Chi, take care and see you next time.